untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we're taking a look at a mono green ramp deck, and this is one of the fastest ramp decks available on Arena, as we get to play with four copies of Leyline of Abundance. This card is banned in Explorer and in Pioneer, but we still have access to it in Historic. This four mana enchantment can start on the battlefield if we have it in our opening hand, and then whenever we tap a creature for mana, we can add an additional green mana. So now all the sudden or one mana elves can make two mana on turn two to cast a four drop. If we get incredibly lucky and start with multiple ley lines in our opener, then now maybe our elf can tap for 3 mana to cast a turn 2 Nissa who shakes the world, which will make our forest tap for additional green mana, and if we turn our forest into creatures with the plus 1 ability, those will also be affected by ley line, so that forest could now tap for 4 mana on turn 2 still, and that can easily win us the game by snowballing that mana advantage. And then at 8 mana we also have a mana sink here, we can activate a ley line to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each creature we control, so if we're out of spells to cast, we still can fall back on the Leyline's ability to maybe win the game. And then besides the Leyline, we also get to play with four copies of a Lenore Tribe, which is another one of these cards that we only get to play in Historic. Can play it on turn two pretty easily, thanks for one-man elves. And then it's a 3-3 that taps for triple green, so that can also set up some explosive starts. Also adds triple green Devotion, which is helpful in making more mana with Nykthos, another recent addition through the Explorer Anthology expansion. And Nykthos also works quite nicely with Leyline starting on the battlefield, as it will increase our Devotion by two. So even though we're not untapping Nykthos, Nykthos with Kiora, like we are in the Explorer build, Nykthos is still a very big part of our game plan. And then uh, taking a look at some of our finishers, of course we can rely on Karn, the Great Creator, to fetch some of our artifacts out of the sideboard with a minus two ability, can fetch up Tormal Script and play it right away to stop some of the graveyard combo decks in the format. Liquid Metal Coating, like we saw in the Red Green Land Destruction deck, is quite effective alongside Karn, can play it right away targeting the opponent's land in their upkeep, so it won't be able to tap for mana in their turn thanks to Karn's passive ability. And then on the following turn we can coating the opponent's land once again, now using Karn plus one ability to turn that land into a zero zero creature essentially killing it on the spot so that's an effective way of repeatedly killing the opponent's lands and then the minus two can also fetch up the stone brain as another card against combo decks and because the stone brain exiles itself we can also repeatedly gain access to it with Karn's minus two ability to maybe strip the opponent's deck out of all their win conditions then a sky sovereign is a six five flying vehicle that can deal three damage to a creature or planeswalker when it enters or attacks and then if we have trouble crewing it we can always use Karn's plus one ability to turn it into a 5-5 flyer so it can still attack and deal more damage. There's Godfarrow's statue which can also be very effective if we play it early and the opponent is behind since now all their spells will cost two additional mana to cast and then it will also slowly ping the opponent to death. Then Wormcoil Engine is another recent addition, a 6-6 Death Dutch lifelink, so this shines against the red burn strategies as a way to pad our life total, and then even if it dies it will still leave behind a 3-3 Death Dutch worm token and a 3-3 lifelinking worm. And then finally Cityscape Leveler, 8 mana 8-8 eight, eight Trampler, when we cast it and whenever it attacks it can destroy up to 1 target a non-land permanent, replacing it with a Power Stone token, which we can also maybe shut down with Karn's passive ability for what it's worth, and then we can also unearth the Leveler to get one last attack in from the graveyard. There's a few other cards we could consider for Karn's sideboard, if you're interested I'll mention them at the end of the video. And then our other finishers include of course Nyssa animating our lands into 3-3 creatures, adding a ton of extra mana, can eventually also ultimate to search up all our forests in the deck and make our lands indestructible. There's Elder Gargroth, 5 mana 6-6 six, six, with Vigilance, Reach and Trample, so it can help out against flying creatures, and whenever it attacks or blocks we can either make a beast, gain 3 life, or draw a card. And then we also have four copies of Storm the Festival as a way to put a bunch of permanents on the battlefield, including lands which will enter untapped. So we can maybe find a Nykthos, activate it and keep going. Maybe flash back Storm the Festival in the same turn so we can do it once again. And can also find our various Planeswalkers, Leyline or Elder Gergroth as a way to close out the game. And then some of the flex slots include Gilded Goose as another 1 mana ramp creature to complement the 8 1 mana elves to have those explosive starts with Layla of Abundance. We've got 4 copies of Paradise Druid which will at least get to tap for mana once as it has a bit of built in protection. And then we can also maybe play it after animating a forest with Nissa, which will tap for 2 mana, can maybe attack with it first. And then we also have two copies of Lenor Visionary, which will draw when it enters and can also tap for a green, can usually cast it on turn 2. 
And then our mana base, besides four copies of Nykthos, also includes two copies of Lair of the Hydra as a creature land that we can maybe sink a bunch of mana into, then a 16 basic force and a Boseju, which can also come in handy. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand's very promising. We've got a Leyline, multiple Elves, and a Karn to sink our mana into. Opponent with a turn 1 Alsade, so it could be an Aura deck or a Life Gain deck. Take one. And a Bishop of Wings, so life gain confirmed. And uh, yeah, play Visionary. And play another Elves as well. And then Nykthos is gonna generate a lot of extra mana too. So next turn should be exciting. We'll have to do the math if we want to maybe play a Leyline first as well. So our Elves make even more mana. It's going to be a Jada gaining four. Okay, let's get this party started. So, we can play Nykthos and then play a Leyline. Take it from there. And then if I play Karn, how much mana do we have left? Six. So if I get Sky Sovereign, I can still play Elves as a blocker. Killing Jada leaves behind a Spirit. And they can attack Karn for two essentially, but we would still keep it alive. And then Sky Sovereign can be crewed on the following turn. So I think I prefer that over Godfarrow's statue here. And then the Alsade also doesn't protect from colorless sources like Sky Sovereign dealing damage. And then now we can just sink mana into a Leyline to pump the team. So even if we do lose Karn, it's not the end of the world. Nykthos by itself can already activate a Leyline. But I'll keep Karn alive if I can. And a Light of Hope to pump Alsade. Fair enough. Could have also taken out our uh, a ley line, so next turn we can crew Sky Sovereign using Karn to take out the Alsade. And then after we crew, we can activate the ley line. And so these now make 9 mana, so I could activate Leyline again. So I'll keep the team back on defense, just attack with Sky Sovereign. And then we can block and still activate. Alright, opponent's got a Fragment Reality. So yeah, that's gonna happen. Got a Paradise Road in return. Stick to the plan. Just pass here. They could kill Karn if they give the uh, bishop protection from green and attack with the spirits but not sure if they're willing to do that and again we still have a decent mana sink here if our opponent has a resplendent angel they could maybe start making tokens with it if the alsade also attacks karn takes one damage And another bishop. So they may be setting up for a resplendent angel next turn. And yeah, with double bishop, that could still easily save the opponent. Poseju can blow up the Alsade itself. Karn just pluses on nothing. Some solutions must be built. So we have 22 mana here. Which means I can activate this twice, not quite three times. And do I start attacking? I can probably attack with, let's see, two of them. And then we can still activate Leyline twice.
Alright, fighters one on the Alsade. So now I'll probably respond by taking it out with Poseju. Opponent does get to find an extra lane, but didn't seem like they were missing a color necessarily. This opponent soaks up 5 damage down to 23. Still have our blockers for bishop, but the spirit means we won't be able to minus 2 Karn to get a finisher. Alright, I'll say is there a resplendent angel left? There is, ouch. Yeah, we're in trouble now. Opponent gets to gain... 16 life, make an extra angel token. So we need to draw one of our curve toppers. Garagroth helps. So, again, Karn plus is on nothing. And then we want to play Garagroth. And then we can still activate Nykthos to pump the team. So I can afford to attack with one creature, as I'll still be able to activate Leyline twice. I think I just deal 5 here as opposed to activate Nykthos, because then I would be forced to activate twice to make use of the floating mana, and then my elves would be tapped. So even if they pump Resplendent Angel, Gargroth can still block it profitably, so they have to use Alsaid to give protection from green. So Karn's gonna die, still gonna block Resplendent Angel to force Alsaid use, and then Gargroth can draw. Since we need to find some more finishers. Okay, so that's taken care of. Lanor Elves not the best. And then end of turn, activate Nykthos, sink mana into Leyline. Okay, so play Elves. It's basically free with Nykthos out. So two Elves can attack, I think. Draw again. Find a tribe. I'll let damage happen. And then play Tribe. And then we can still uh, pump our team a bunch. Okay, not hating my position. Another Fragment Reality on Gergroth could be scary. Especially if there's another Angel and another Resplendent Angel. Definitely one of their better draws. So our opponent will make two angel tokens end of turn, both gaining eight more life each. But Gergroth holds the fort. We'll make some mana here. Just a land. Okay, probably time to turn the entire team sideways. And then, let's see, Nykthos makes 14, 15, 16, so we can activate Leyline twice. Although I should maybe still see what we draw of Gergroth first. Opponent could try and take out Gergroth, but hopefully they'll take a lot of damage in the process. Just to land. So our opponent is going to trade for Gergroth. Taking a lethal in the process. Awesome. Close game here against Mono White Life Gain. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Got a couple one drops, but no ley line. 
pretty far from casting our 5 drops necessarily. Karn's also not that good if we don't have a lot of mana to work with. So this could be a mulligan. This is not great. Turn 1 elves, but then no real follow-up. So I think we're going to 5. And then hope for a ley line. No ley line, but elves into tribe into Nyssa. We'll keep, and then Paradise Root can go, and probably let go of Nykthos if we want to cast Tribe into Nyssa. Turn on Mountain, and Kumano, so Elf survives. Opponent incentivized to play a creature next turn, so our Tribe might survive as well. Just an Eidolon that we don't care about since we're going over the top now with Nyssa. Okay, so now land sequencing. So I guess I can try and keep uh, Lanor Elves back on defense to protect Nyssa as well. Unclear whether killing Eidolon is actually beneficial for me. Might be better off just keeping the forest back and not attacking. Although then Eidolon's gonna attack next turn, but maybe we'll uh, deal the opponent some damage of their own Eidolon in the meantime. So let's pass. Swiss Spear deals two damage. And Lightning Strike kills the forest. I guess there was also a sequence where I can keep Lair of the Hydra available, so I can animate that as an extra blocker. So they won't quite be able to kill Nyssa at least. Paradise Road deals a bit of damage to myself. That's okay. The elements. Keep the tribe back, just hit for three. And then we can animate a pretty large lair now, which can also start attacking. Soul Scar Mage can shrink down my creatures. So yeah, for a Mulligan to 5, we're not doing too bad. Punja is going to pass. And a Leyline is a mana sink. So probably just float mana, untap. Play a Leyline, keeping a Lair untapped. And then pass, and we can pump uh, our team with Leyline already. Okay, Blast going after Nyssa. That works. And a Crucible to make a pair of 1-1s. Let's see what happens. Just Eidolon and the tokens attacking. So at the moment we can still save Nyssa. They'll need to send in one more creature. At which point we may be able to just block profitably and then kill the opponent on the crack back. Which is probably what we're gonna do. So go to blockers. And then find to take out Eidolon now. Pump the team. And our opponent should be dead on the way back. Awesome, get to rank up as well. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with an exciting hand. A Leyline Inner Opener, double Anor Elves and Paradise Druids, so we can quickly generate a ton of mana and at the very least sink it into the Leyline's ability, but hopefully 
pick up some more cards off the top we can cast. What is our opponent up to? Red black. Could see removal, could see a thought seize. Okay, Karn's an excellent mana sink. And uh yeah, just play Paradise Druids and Lenor Elves here. And then next turn we can already play Karn and maybe get something expensive to cast. Blood Crypt untapped without casting anything could imply a Death Shadow deck. Molten Impact kills a Lenor Elves. Find another. So let's say we play Karn, play Lenor Elves, and then against a mid range deck, what do we get? They could, of course, still make us discard whatever we search up here. But a Liquid Metal Coating, I guess I could play and activate in the opponent's upkeep on the Blood Crypt. And that's going to be effective for as long as we control Karn. If they take out Karn, it's not that exciting anymore. So maybe you just grab like a Cityscape Leveler, which we can still unearth at the very least. Sure. And then keep Paradise Root untapped. And then Croxo is going to make his discard Leveler, that's fine. And sadly, Fatal Push, which also triggers Impact, which takes out Karn. Alright, that was a setback, but a Storm the Festival, a nice top deck now. So let's go for it. Finding Tribe and probably another Leyline. So now each Elf makes 3 mana, and this one will make 5. Have a couple goodies in the graveyard to maybe replay. A Liliana can make a sacrifice. Lunar Elves. Enough with the mysteries. I've come an <laughs> Haven't you ever heard of and Fatal Push Paradise Root. Alright, still have our tribe. We're one mana short of casting Storm the Festival. Yeah, I think we just attack Liliana. And then with the land, we get to Storm Festival. Fine. I know when I'm not wanted. Maybe wait for Croxa to show up to unearth the leveler. If they have an answer for tribe, we could be in a bit of trouble. Harvester, that's fine. One card left in hand. Opponent goes digging. So next turn they can escape Croxa. I think we just play Lanor Elves and then pass. And then I can still activate Leyline to pump our team. So yeah, they had a fair bit of interaction early on. They probably kept a Fatal Push to enable Molten Impact, which is why they didn't necessarily kill our Elf right away. Okay, we get to untap, so let's activate Leyline. And let's flashback storm the festival while we can. If I play a ley line first, there's a risk of removal in response. But I may just want to activate castle, since they might have wanted to kill our elf before we got to untap. So if I do play a ley line, this will make six mana. This makes four mana. So then I can still flashback storm the festival. Might be unnecessarily greedy. And hits Gergroth and Tribe. Don't need to Leyline anymore. Not a bad hit. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. And our hand leaves a lot to be desired. Let's take a mulligan. Okay, this one's kind of slow. Do get to start with double Leyline, but our only elf is a turn 3 visionary. If I top deck an elf in the first turn or two, this could get there, but um, I guess we also have a Nykthos, which with double ley line is already generating extra mana. Okay, I guess I could be persuaded. And then what do I get rid of is a question. 
have to keep land Nyxos double ley line. So maybe I do get rid of Visionary and try and leverage Nyxos instead. And then Storm the Festival could be a decent mana sink. So no one mana elf, hopefully pick one up next turn. Just a land, so at least we'll be able to activate Nykthos. Although we'll still be a mana shy of casting Nyssa. So yeah, next turn we can make that happen. Opponent on a life gain deck, voice into Heliot. Luckily, no one mana life gain enabler. Time for Nyssa. Okay, let's see if they can animate Heliod. Johnny's welcome up to four devotion. And Skyclave can exile a leyline. Grows voice twice. So if we want to save Nissan, we'll have to chum block. Although that seems worth it here. And then next turn we can still storm the festival. How rude. Another ley line. So Nykthos makes four. Then if I were to play ley line, I can animate a lance, which then will make a four mana. This will tap for two, and then I can still storm the festival. And then, of course, we also have another Nykthos we can play. So let's storm. Finding Tribe and do we want another Nykthos? I guess that lets me flash back Storm the Festival now. Can I attack first with my forest? Finding Tribe and... Lair of the Hydra could be a decent mana sink. Could grab a goose as a chum blocker. But uh, yeah, opponent's got a Heliod engine online. Voice is going to gain flying soon. So it's going to be hard to race. And I guess Heliod being indestructible means Lair's going to have a hard time actually attacking. So I might prefer goose. So yeah, we're kind of out of action now. Can sink a bunch of mana into a ley line, but... Uh, Opponent might still be able to go over the top. So really need to find a Karn to take apart the opponent's board. Double voice now. So it's not going to take long for those to become indestructible too. So Goose can chump voice at least. But... Uh, yeah, if I want to keep Nissa alive, I'll have to give up double tribe. So maybe we just let Nissa go here. And then keep my devotion with Nykthos. And try maybe pump the team with Leyline. Mystic, not the best. Don't even know if it's worth playing with Soul Warden out. But, uh,. I guess we'll give it a try. So we'll pass. Can make a bunch of mana, activate Leyline. But it's gonna be tough. So precisely how much mana can we make? So let's see. 23, so I can activate it three times if I tap Gilded Goose. 
So I can make a 6-6 six, six blocker to block Heliod. Yeah, that seems worth it. And then take 14. Need a good top deck here. And Lunar Elves is not gonna do it, I'm afraid. Alright, I think we're uh, defeated here by the life gain deck. Next turn, they can attack with two large flyers. And that should be game. We definitely had a bit of a sketchy keep. And the uh, Nykthos double A line plan didn't quite pan out. Although, we kind of just missed. Uh, big finisher that we couldn't find with our Storm the Festival. So, yeah, that's gonna be game. Can uh, pump our team a few times, but one of the flyers is gonna go through. Can gain three with Gilded Goose after chumping, but we would still die. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. No Leyline, but turn one Mystic, turn two Visionary, hopefully. Can lead to good things. Gigantha could imply Wizards, which does have access to some early removal spells. Although, play with fire is often the only real one mana removal, since Wizards Lightning needs a Wizard in play before it works. So it's gonna be a Soulscar Mage instead. A ley line a bit late to the party, but uh, yeah, play visionary and then hopefully a Nissan next turn. Mentor's guidance to draw, so yeah, opponent gets to find two cards, but we'll get to resolve either Gergroth or Nissa. Nissa not super likely to survive next turn, since it could have all sorts of burn spells or haste creatures. Karn's interesting too. So, a Gargroth could be a safer investment, of course still dies to a pair of burn spells, but definitely a bit more difficult for the wizard's deck to interact with, since a flyer with haste wouldn't be able to take it out. If I do play Nyssa, get to untap my land, doesn't really cast anything else. So yeah, I'm kind of liking uh, Gargroth here, and then I'll run out Nykthos as well, so that can maybe make more mana next turn. And see where we're at. Soulscar Mage can shrink down Gargroth, so I'm not going to block if they attack. There's a Symmetry Sage, so yeah, that's what could have easily killed a Nyssa. And a Static Discharge shrinks Gergroth, but doesn't take it out. So yeah, we get to untap with everything, pretty much. And uh, this should be exciting. So I could play a Leyline before tapping any of my Elves, so those make 4 mana. I can play Nyssa, untap my land, which will make 3 mana. Doesn't seem all that amazing. What if we just play Nissa first? So play Nissa, and then have six mana left over, so that's enough for Storm the Festival. Yeah, that's gonna be better. And then Gargroth also gets a free attack. Hit double forests, so that can still play either Leyline or Karn. But we can attack first to see what we pick up. Could also decide to make beasts as an extra blocker, which I don't mind. Gargroth likely to die next turn, but then opponent will have a hard time killing both of my planeswalkers. 
Could also just play a ley line here to set up for next turn. In which case I'm maybe still happy drawing. Now let's make a beast. And yeah, we'll wait on Karn. Leyline should set up a more powerful turn next turn. So they can kill Gargroth, most likely. Probably kill Nyssa as well, but then we'll still be in a decent spot. And yeah, opponent packs it in, so beat Blue-Red Wizards. Definitely one of the more popular decks in the best-of-one historic metagame. So overall, this Mono Green Ramp deck performed quite well for us. Even if we didn't get to see the full extent of Karn's wishboard that we can access nowadays, did not include Portal to Phyrexia, which is another one of those cards you could easily include. Caged Sun is another recent addition that you could play to pump the team and let your lands produce more mana. And then there's also the Great Henge, of course, which can be a little bit tricky to cast since we don't have a ton of huge creatures outside of Elder Gergroth, so it's going to be pretty pricey to get in play, but can also be a source of life gain and additional card advantage in the more mid rangey matchups. Could have been useful against a red black mid range deck, for instance. So yeah, there's quite a few options as far as the wishboard is concerned, and then the main deck has a few flex slots as well, like the Lanor Visionary, I'm playing one Gilded Goose, so there's a few cards you can still play around with. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay, want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.